I once read this story about a blind woman who lived in an assisted living facility and she was moved to a new room that looked like an institutional room. It, it was okay, but there was nothing special about it. But upon entering the room, the blind lady just gushed over how beautiful she thought everything was. And the one assisting her countered, ma'am, why do you say that? You, you can't see. And the blind lady replied, well, because I choose to see it that way. Now, that story was written to promote the value of a, a good, healthy, optimistic attitude and a healthy, positive outlook on life, and it has merit in this life in that way. <clears throat> but what if there had been a, let's say, a big rattlesnake coiled up inside the room that she couldn't see, and it was ready to strike once she entered? Well, she couldn't see it. And in that case, her blindness could prove to be deadly, in spite of the fact that right up until the moment the snake struck, she was cheerfully imagining everything was just fine. <laughs> That's how I once viewed things at a time when I was confident of my own salvation. And I was, only later to discover why I had been lost. I was religiously sincere, but sincerely wrong. I didn't know God's way of salvation that time. And in spiritual blindness, though, I thought I was just fine. Well, that's the serpent Satan's goal. It's to keep us in blindness. Content with imagining things are just fine with us and with God, and when the reality is that they're not. In 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4, Paul wrote, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. See, in darkness we walk contrary to God's reality. In ignorance of God's way of salvation by Christ based upon his imputed righteousness alone. So in spiritual darkness, we'll believe a lie, and it's a deadly lie. As we first always imagine, and perhaps in keeping with what we've been taught if we've been active in religion, we imagine that our salvation's condition, at least in part, in some way, something by something done by us or through us, or in us, the sinner. You see, rather than condition exclusively on the doing and dying of the Savior in our place. And you know that message that promotes that, it can be subtle. They'll talk much about Jesus Christ and how he died and he, he you know, all the things he did, a lot of true things, and then they'll say, but you must do your part. And that's, that's how uh, deceptive the lie of a false gospel can be. You know, my wife Susan recently shared with me a comment that she heard on a podcast she was listening to in which the lady said, <clears throat> whenever you fight reality, you lose 100% of the time. Well, you know, there's no loss of greater consequence than to leave this life still in a state of darkness in ignorance of God's reality what he says in this book concerning his way of salvation. You see, that's a loss for all eternity. You know, like the story of the blind lady that I just mentioned, it reminded me of times when I've tried to discuss the gospel or scripture with others. And I've often heard responses like this, well, I like to think about it this way. Or I cho choose to believe that it's this way. In essence, treating the light, the specific truth of how God saves sinners, is something they can take or leave, accept or reject, almost as if they're assuming their salvation can be based upon however they choose to see it. Well, that's just as deadly as that blind lady getting struck by that snake. See, it's not God's reality as set forth in his word. We better see what he has to say about the gospel, how he saves sinners.